Good morning. Good morning. Um, so this happened. I'd like to begin this entire vlog by saying that this was not my fault. <laughs> this this might, might have been my fault. <laughs> might have been my fault. Definitely was. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks for your help. I'm kind of glad that this must happen so often and we're not the only silly billies because there is an entire store <laughs> dedicated just for people like us. <laughs> So I don't think in all the frenzy we actually stopped to explain what was happening. No, me neither. <laughs> I feel like we're calming down now, but oh my god, that was the most insane morning. So we got up at 4am, it's still only 7am now, uh, to get to our flight to Hong Kong today. And we had everything laid out, ready to pack, and all we had to do this morning was like put our stuff into our suitcases. But yesterday, Kane gave Christina the key that accesses our storage cage, which is where all our suitcases are. And so we couldn't get any of our suitcases. So this morning we had to like run through the entire apartment, find any bag, any like vessel that we could carry things in and just stuff all our stuff in there. And then we arrived here with the most odd combination of bags and had to- And tiny bags. Tiny well. bags. And had to like hope that the luggage shop was open so that we could go and buy a suitcase and check that in instead. Uh, we literally came to the airport with like 10 backpacks. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry, have you got a suitcase? <laughs> so thanks Kane for organizing that. I feel like unless you're constantly supervised, stuff like this happens. Responsible adult at your service. <laughs> Here's one straight for grape juice. Is she to call it now? Grape juice. She calls it grape juice when it's um. Listen, port. after the morning you put me through, we're toasting to the fact that uh, we're on this flight. I've got right some now. grape juice too. That was hectic. I'm like mm. calming down now. I still have a high heart rate. Yeah, my heart. I forgot my Apple Watch. I'm pretty certain I'm running at like about 140 BPM right now. Absolutely crazy. But we made it. We're on the plane. Got comfy seats. It's all good. It is a little cooler, isn't it? It's a bit fresh. Maybe not this fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's that fresh. <laughs> what is 170 Hong Kong dollars in US dollars? Wow, that was really good. What was that? So we're gonna fly, or we're not gonna fly. We're now gonna get a train to Hong Kong Central, which is where our hotel is. Um, and we were advised to get the train rather than get a taxi because we've got to go for a causeway and all sorts of stuff. And that has cost us 170 Hong Kong dollars, which is about 20 US dollars between us. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that's pretty good. It's going to be a long journey and 10 bucks, so pretty impressive. It's a bit dark and a bit cloudy right now, but I reckon this view tomorrow morning will be absolutely brilliant. You can't really see it, but... Oops. temple that worships two gods, the god of man and the god of mo. Not moustaches. <laughs> Not moustaches. So the god of man is the god of literature and the god of mo is the god of martial arts. So the god of man holds a pen, so people who come here and worship him are anyone in their profession who holds a pen. So like a student or a teacher or a journalist, things like that. And the god of mo holds a knife, so the people that come here and worship the god of mo have like danger in their profession. Middle name. <laughs> Not their middle name, like policemen or military and things like that so it should be really interesting
That was a lot of um, that was a lot of incense. I know it smells incredible. Yeah. But it's so smoky in there because it's such a popular temple that my eyes are like stinging now. <laughs> so those incense coils, you can buy like a piece of paper and put a wish on it. Yeah. And you then buy the coil of incense and you can hang it up there. And the bigger the incense, the more expensive it is. You know that coil, one of the coils they had there, it will burn for three months straight. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like, you know those Mortine mosquito coils that we have at home? <laughs> it's not like that. No, it is. It's the same sort of material, but it's like massive. You hang it from the ceiling and it hangs like a lampshade and it will just burn for three months. Wow. And also, we were allowed to take photos and videos in there, just no flash, so it was perfectly fine. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, we did ask. Do we have to pay to get on this? No. We're just about to get on the longest escalator in the world. Longest outdoor escalator. Oh, longest outdoor escalator. <laughs> I don't know if I can even pick it up, like, where this thing ends. I'm just going to turn the camera around, but I don't think you can see it. We're going to get on here and it goes all the way up, literally, to that skyscraper there. Right, Ooh. we are officially on the longest outdoor escalator in the world. If I sound out of breath, it's because I'm using my Ronin for <laughs> everything. And it's like a tripod, so it's keeping it nice and smooth. But man, it's heavy. This is going to be such a workout. I know, I'm never going to the gym again. <laughs> so we're currently at a place called Tai Kun. This used to be a police station and there were actually jail cells in there and everything. And I think we're actually going to be able to see some remnants of the jail cells still existing. But it's now been turned into this really cool contemporary space where you can see like artwork and like different things on exhibition. So this is what we're in right now, I think. What a view. Hello. Hello! They probably follow the vlogs. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I hate it when I have to meet fans in public. It's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, we're like, wave please. <laughs> Do you know what I really like? I like how there's like an air of a little bit of chaos here. Like it's super highly populated. So there's like so many buildings that are everywhere, really tall high rises. But they've got like a really incredible culture. Like there's really beautiful cafes and restaurants. And I don't know, I really like it. You Ev see all these like little gems in the middle of like chaos. Everyone is very respectful yes. of each other. Yes. Which I think you need when you're in, in a city that's so densely populated. Yeah. You have to be. Like the rules on the escalators are like stand to the right, hold on and don't walk or don't move. It's completely the opposite to in London where like I think you stand on the right if you want to just hold on and like take the lazy way or if you want to walk you have to go on the left and if you're on the wrong hand wrong side of the escalator people will barge you out of the way <laughs> like it's it's really nuts whereas here it's far more respectful but it has to be because there is eight million people living here and it's only a footprint of i think 1100 square kilometers so like that's a lot of people for a very small amount of space that's why there are so many high rises like that's the first thing that i saw last night when we arrived is like the the, the high rises are so close to each other and there's so many of them like the average height of them is like 40 or 50 stories on average. Yeah, that's crazy. So there's just so many skyscrapers because that's where everybody's living. Everybody had to build up. Yeah, look at this. We, we aren't actually in, like we aren't in like a business district right now. This is just the middle of town where people are living. Uh, I would say about 70% of the apartments I'm about to show you, they're residential. But check this, they're, this is the average height of the building. So residential, residential, possibly an office, but I think it's residential. That blue one's definitely an office. Residential, 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 and obviously these two are offices. But that's a lot of, that is a lot of buildings. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Wait, that, am I taller than you? All right, hold this a minute. Let's see, let's see if I can, uh... <laughs> I love this place. <laughs> Mia was so proud about that shot, she actually said, oh my god, I'm amazing. <laughs> and I'm going to do that same shot, but turn to this direction. This way? Yeah, so we get the market in the background. Oh, Ooh. full 360. You like that one? <laughs> We're going to go try milk tea now. This is like really strong tea. I think they use like a bunch of different leaves to brew it. And then they put milk and a lot of sugar, so it's really quite sweet. Right. But because you never drink coffee, you might be bouncing off the walls after this. I've already had a Red Bull. <laughs> no. This is not a good start to my day. Well, this is how to deal with jet lag. 
So this place is absolutely packed. So we've made some new friends and we're just jumping on the table with everybody else. We've got noodles with egg and veggies and a milk tea. You've got to try this. This is going to give us a lot of energy. Yeah. So for someone that has never, ever drunk coffee before in my life, <laughs> I feel pretty wide right now. From tea. <laughs> you can get like oh, yeah. buzzed from tea. Especially that tea. That tea is strong. So that tea was kind of like filtered and strained and filtered and strained over and over and over again. I kind of tried to get some footage, but I don't think I quite got it because um, it's very busy in there, but. Look at the line, just to get the tea. Yeah, we got crazy. there just as lunch, lunch hour kind of started. Yeah. And as soon as we were in there, there were people actually sitting on our table because we had a few spare seats. It was just crazy. Yeah, that was the most tight, tightly packed restaurant I've ever been in. And possibly the best food I've ever had. I know, it's such a good like local experience. And I feel right? so energized. This is, a, I know. <laughs> Alright. So we have arrived in Hong Kong and we're here on a pretty exciting job because Ken and I are like on assignment because the reason we're here is Qantas and Hong Kong Tourism Board have teamed up and booked us to come and create a bunch of content here in Hong Kong which is so exciting because we're actually creating content for their channels not just for our YouTube channel. Yeah. So we are trying to vlog and then simultaneously create these like videos tourism style videos for the Hong Kong Tourism Board so we're gonna try and check in with you guys as much as possible but that's not our number one priority here with this camera and we've spent most of today already just filming um, kind of around and about with our guide who's showing us all the coolest spots um, so hopefully we can still deliver some cool vlogs, but it's thanks to you guys that we've got this job, so thank you. And this is the first time that we've ever been booked by a tourism board to actually come and like check out the city or the country and put together some sort of content for them. So what we have while we're here, oh maybe you're you're moving me out Ooh, of frame. Sorry. <laughs> so the interesting thing for us while we're here is we're here for five days and we have a jam-packed itinerary. Mm. Like, I mean, we're meeting our guide Vivian at 8 a.m. every morning and then we have like bang, 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 like back-to-back -back activities and things that we have to go and have a look at and see until midnight every single night. So it's pretty full on. So it's gonna be an interesting week full of just exploring and filming and taking a bunch of photos and that's our job for the week. Are you gonna show everyone what you actually make for Qantas? And I the feel Kong that I need to let the tourism board see the video first before I put it online oh, so yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll show you that in a few videos time. Probably I probably point. need to get the client to approve it. Thank you. 
<laughs> so seductive. Are we both have like nerdy little t-shirts on today? Uh, my t-shirt's not nerdy. Your t-shirt literally says Nerd City. <laughs> yeah, but if you knew, you wouldn't be calling that nerdy. Yeah, only cool people know what Nerd City is. Exactly. So we're about to meet up with Vivian. She's like our tour guide here and she's going to take us to a local breakfast spot. Then we're going to jump on the trams and the trams look really cool because they're like super skinny like Harry Potter trams. And they're squashed. They're like squashed <laughs> double decker buses. They look like little iPhones traveling along the street. They're pretty cute. <laughs> so, yeah, little iPhones. <laughs> they're exactly that ratio as well. <laughs> so all the places that we're going to eat on this trip, they're all tucked away back alley cafes. They're not your standard. Instagramable places that you would typically go and the reason for that is we're trying to show the the hidden gems of the city rather than the places that you can google and see anyway um, so it's more about the good food rather than the cutesy little cocktail gimmicky yeah stuff. the gimmicky stuff yeah. that you might not want to see so we're gonna try and show both sides of Hong Kong and I have dressed very practically for the day I think I have sneakers on I have something that looks like a little bit glam in case I don't have time to get changed later. And I'm also very confused about the weather because it looks cold when you look outside. So I've brought this big coat, but then as soon as you get outside, you kind of realize that it's baking hot. Pia also went and bought the same sneakers as me yesterday. So now we both have exactly the same shoes on. <laughs> yeah, same she, sneakers. She says it's a couple goals. I'm just like, this is, we are the people that I used to laugh at when I was a kid. <laughs> I love those people. And we've met up with Vivian. Vivian, say hi. Hi, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> this is Vivian. She's our guide so that we don't get lost around Hong Kong. It's making sure that we actually get to our entire itinerary on time. If you see us mentioning Vivian, this is who we're talking about. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this menu is entirely not in English. <laughs> yep. Ham, double egg, satay beef noodles, pickled meat, fried eggs, intestines, scrambled egg, fried scrambled eggs, tomatoes, Wow. Wow, it's amazing. What kind of app is that? That's Google. <gasps> and what's this? That's... So hang on, let me just tell you. <laughs> That's juice. <laughs> <laughs> one good tip when you get here is to get one of these octopus cards. They basically, you like load a bit of cash onto these and then they can take you anywhere. So any of the public transport that you need to use, even some venues will let you pay entry fee with these. And you can even buy things from like 7-Eleven and stuff using these. So they're a really handy thing to have if you're traveling to Hong Kong. You look like a pregnant lady. <laughs> you got a sore back there. <laughs> well, it's carrying a lot of baggage right now. You should rub, you should rub the front of it oh, at oh, all times. Uh -oh. oh my God, he's going into labor. Oh no. Oh, it's coming from the wrong angle. It's angel. a cannon. <laughs> the one thing that I haven't heard here since being here. Yeah, what's that? Silence. Oh yeah. Oh, no. It is a 24 hour city and there is noise everywhere. It's actually made it quite hard to vlog because my microphone is so good it keeps picking up like all the background noise and there's a lot of it. It's just part of the beauty of the city. You yeah, I love it. it. It reminds me very much of New York. Yes, that's right. Never sleeps, never, never stands off. Never sleeps. Always hustling and bustling. Yeah, I love it. Okay, do you see what I mean by these tiny thin trams? How cute are they? They're like from the Harry Potter bus. <laughs> They're so thin. It's hard to show you guys on video, but that is literally like the width of a door, basically. They're getting very hyped about these trams. They are so cute. I think I ate too much breakfast to fit on it though. <laughs> the, oh, la yeah. the last time I got on a bus and sat in pretty much this exact spot, I left everything I own <laughs> in this exact spot and then just left the bus. I'm gonna do like a three point check with you yeah. every time we like disembark any public transport or anything like that. And just for the vlog, I have put my camera down. So all of my stuff is there.
these trees which seem to start up there, their roots have grown all the way down the outside of this wall in search of water. And it ends literally on this level here, one whole kind of level down. And we're currently in search of water and that's why I'm going to make my way into this cafe. I found the best menu. <laughs> they do like tea and coffee infused with like alcoholic cocktails. So look, there's like a bar behind there, but it's like a coffee shop. Such a good idea. I want to open this in Australia. Look how cute my latte looks. What flavour is that? So that is turmeric and ginger and cinnamon and like a spicy kind of mix. I think it's going to be really good for my immune system actually. I think it's really spicy. Yeah. It smells like a hot curry. It does, doesn't it? Let me try it. Oh my goodness, okay, that is really spicy smelling. Wow, okay, that is very, very spicy. <laughs> but nice. Well, we demolished that. <laughs> yeah, we did a good job, didn't we? <laughs> that was our pre-lunch, after-breakfast, mid-morning snack. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! This itinerary has a lot of food items in it. If we normally get a takeaway from like our local Indian, we'll get like one meal and share it between us and one rice and, and share it between us. Meal. That's our cheat meal and it's half a meal each. And we're full at that point. I think Vivian thinks that I don't eat enough. You are like a tiger but eat like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you say he looks like a tiger. She had to say that or she would have got in trouble. <laughs> Freeze or I'll shoot. He has been um, experimenting with the 5D Mark IV and she's getting really good at taking photos. I'm now the photographer. She's putting me out of work. Well, he's busy creating all the video content and I normally just sit there twiddling my thumbs. So I thought, you know, I'm a pretty good photographer. I'll give it a crack. She's so doing now, a good job. Hong Kong tourism didn't know that they hired me. Shh, don't tell them. <laughs> That's actually the really interesting thing about Hong Kong. It is the second most expensive city in the world to live in. Like the apartments are insanely expensive. But so many of the other living expenses like food and travel and getting around is incredibly affordable and that's how it balances itself out, I guess. Yeah, I haven't found food expensive at all. Makes me look at all my Uber receipts in Australia and just shake my head. I shake my head anyway when I see your Uber receipts. <laughs> On the train we were just doing some Googling and we saw that there is uh, a, a cake shop that sells small I think they're custard donuts, but they're in the shape of cartoon characters. Yeah, like little animals. Oh, let's go find them. I feel that we couldn't say we've been to Hong Kong if we didn't find that little shop. Agreed. Pia's happy because he's fat. She's wanted to come to this restaurant for a long time. <laughs> oh, this keen, is good. Keen as a bean. So there's a YouTuber that I follow that's really good. His name's Christian LeBlanc. And in his vlog when he was in Hong Kong, he came to this restaurant for yum cha. And I love yum cha. So I figured, <laughs> What better place to have yum cha than Hong Kong? Yes, exactly. And the best thing about it is they're like cute little piggies and stuff. Yeah, this isn't like <laughs> uh, traditional yum cha. This is like a fast food chain, but yeah. it's good. <laughs> the food looks like animals. <laughs> Look at that one. And then we've got little piggies on the back here. You know the little wooden dishes that the dumplings come in? They have hashtag let's do yum cha on the side. Like this is, <laughs> this is an Instagram heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I get very excited about food. Okay, what's this? 3013. Yeah. Don't try and kid yourself. This isn't healthy. Well, it's like coming into McDonald's ordering a McSalad. I'm going to get naked but <laughs> I might embrace the plus size this year. Alright. Would you be down with that? Yeah. Not you. Oh. My real friends. <laughs> We ordered the most outrageous things just because they looked fun on the, on the menu. Yeah, it's a picture book menu, so <laughs> Pia went nuts. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Oh my gosh, look. <laughs> now you can show them. So this, so this is round one. Let's take it out. Oh, no way. Mm. So what's in the middle? Just pineapple. Pineapple. That's good. A moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. <laughs> Can you not say that right now? 
Wow, that's really tasty. Mm. We walked for one hour to be here because mm. I thought on the map it said 120 meters. That actually ended up being 5.7 kilometers. 5.7? Mm. You didn't tell me that. I know, you'd have gone mad. <laughs> Because I was like, are we there yet? And you were like, we're about halfway. <laughs> it's like, we've walked for like an hour. It was actually a full hour. That's my spoon. My handle twists like that. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Oh, it's actually quite comfortable. And look at these knives and forks. They've got no... <laughs> <laughs> So right now we're in like the Times Square of Hong Kong. So outside is like these shops and we're actually on the second level and something that I found quite interesting is here because there's so many high rises. There are literally high rises that have restaurants on every floor. It's because real estate is so expensive. Yeah. So like instead of like a high rise being a hotel or an office building mm. that just has a restaurant down the bottom or on the rooftop, it's like every single floor has a different restaurant. Yeah. It's the only way that they can afford rent and make profit. Like yesterday we went to a restaurant and the, I think we were on level 22. Yeah. And there was, like when you were going up the elevator, like every every level was just a different restaurant. <laughs> this is brilliant. I don't even know which one's dessert and which one's a main. This one's a custody guy. I'm gonna try. Oh, they're hot. Yeah, it should be warm custard in the middle. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna you give him, should I, should I give him a little mouth? Oh, <laughs> that doesn't really look like oh. a mouth. Oh. Oh, that's a lot of custard. Goopy custard. Oh my god, it's warm. It's hot custard. Yum. What's happening right now? I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Are we being dumb here? But I've never seen a round escalator. I, how is this happening? I hope we don't sound stupid, but this escalator is going around a corner. And I've, I've never been on an escalator that does that before. So my mind's a little bit blown. <laughs> We're about to jump on a ferry and head to dinner. Then after that, we're going on Aqua Luna, which are these really cool, like old Wait. style boats with these big Wait. sails. Oh, they're, they're junk boats. Yes. And it is day three here in Hong Kong. So we have another busy day ahead. We're gonna go meet up with Vivian, our guide, and she's gonna take us around Shum Shui Po. On the agenda are things like going to the market there. We're gonna go visit a few factories and something called Button Street, um, and just kind of check out the area there. I think a lot of people go to places like Times Square or you know around the central area, but we're taking a slightly different approach and trying to create some videos that are a little bit more niche. So if you really want to experience the real Hong Kong, hopefully the video that we're creating will help you with that. So this is like a very much local area. I think the area is a little bit more affordable in terms of housing and rent for shops. And Vivian was telling me that there's like some shops here that are family owned that have been here for like a hundred years because they just prosper on because it's a little bit cheaper to operate out of here. I think we found the most Instagrammable building in Hong Kong. Yeah, we definitely did. Check this out. It's like a full piece of art. There's like a dog or a wolf up there. So if you do come to Hong Kong and you want to kind of escape the touristy areas, I highly suggest you come check out Sham Shui Po because this is like a whole another world. You don't really have the modern influences that the main sort of central Hong Kong island has and it just takes you back and you can explore some really cool places. Like we'll have to drop the GPS to that tofu place. Yeah, 100%. If you like tofu, they make tofu fresh every single day and the soy milk and everything like that is made on site and I just had the best tofu of my life. Hello puppies. Hi, how are you? Can we just say hi to your dogs? Yeah, sure. Is that okay? Hello. 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 
<laughs> Why are you crazy? Are you crazy? Hello. Oh, you're getting more curious. What are you oh, looking at? Oh my goodness. What are you looking at? <laughs> yeah, do you want to have a look in the camera? <laughs> Ones. It's like a lion. Oh, no. That, that was, was not meant to be on the tour, but now that's a secret gem. Oh, I can't wipe the smile off my face. I know. That was really nice. They were so cute. I really miss muesli, and I also want to buy a Malamut now. is the oldest mechanical tram in all of Hong Kong and it literally goes at a 45 degree angle so we're going to be going up the hill like this that is Peter standing completely straight right now that's, what it is. that's the angle we're actually at and that's the angle that she's standing I'm standing completely straight that was incredible that's that completely mechanical that isn't like electric that is a mechanical tram that was crazy look at it this was going to be my best time lapse of the trip i'm so so annoyed the weather's always against me all right we are going to head back down because it's um unfortunately a bad view today uh we're gonna go home pack get to the airport and then carry on this block is beautiful like as soon as you walk in you see this incredible bar everyone's ordering like Aperol spritzes and crazy cocktails and everything then there's a buffet here and like an entire a la carte menu and um, really good ice cream too ice, ice cream and champagne <laughs> I'm celebrating a successful mission yeah that was a good week right you now have like the biggest amount of editing to do ever <laughs> so I've actually shot nine hours of video to make five mini videos yeah to make five 60 second videos you have nine hours of footage oh my gosh i don't envy you we have eggplants what's this oh i have no idea poor kane doesn't feel too well he's got like a bit of a tummy ache so he's sticking to ice cream are you not feeling well i know i think i ate too much spice i really like curry <laughs> So I'm like, give me the hottest one you've got. I think you overestimate your tolerance for uh, like spicy I, food. I feel like my brain tells me that I've got a cast iron stomach. <laughs> and my stomach's like, uh-uh. <laughs> They're really big fans of the vlog, so they wanted to get a quick photo, which is kind of cute. <laughs> All weekend in Sydney is an aviation festival where if you want to become a pilot, you can go and like sit in a 747 in the seat. They've actually got a proper plane you can go check out. And I really want to be there. Oh, you should have told them. I know. Well, that's what I'm telling them now. So hopefully, if anyone from Quants is watching. <laughs> Last time you were like, I want to work on your marketing team. Now you want to be a pilot. I mean, I'm basically a pilot anyway. <laughs> Are you a drone pilot? With my droning, I'm almost there. <laughs> I knew you would say that. The funny thing is, we had to get insurance for Kane, like uh, public liability insurance and stuff like that. And because he flies a drone, we literally had to get like pilot, pilot insurance. insurance. <laughs> like he operates an aircraft. Yep. Thank you, Andrew. Hi.
which is so funny, Pia was trying to log onto the website to try and change our seats so we could guarantee to get a window seat, but we couldn't figure out how to do it because we're computer illiterate. <laughs> but it didn't matter because look, <laughs> we've got this bit. Yeah. And a window seat. Yeah, Can I'm, you put my bag in there? No, my laptop's going in there. And my bag? Not your bag. <laughs> No, it's my side. The moral of the story is don't ever mess with the system. <laughs> oh, I can't reach it. <laughs> Uh, joystick controls, you know, the roll of the aircraft. Yep. The um, pedals control the rudder at the back, so the yaw. And are most of these buttons just for the lights? <laughs> Yep, those are all the lights, yeah. <laughs> So we've moved out of premium economy. Yeah, moved up to beyond first class. <laughs> so you take it out for a little spin. <laughs> this is very dangerous. I've been assured it is in park. Yeah, they just turned the lights on and came like really freaked out because look at how amazing this looks. You know in Back to the Future when he turns on the flux capacitor? Yeah. It's like, I feel like we can like probably travel through time you've got, now. You've got enough. That, that button's here. The yeah, flux. You got enough. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, this, this, oh, that's, that's the, the flux, flux capacitor. <laughs> well, that was a good end to a trip. This is the best bit. <laughs>